you can use the search function in Excel to find text within another string of text. And search is not case sensitive, so upper and lower case won't matter. And we'll see how you can use wildcards or specify a starting position within the text that you're searching. So in this first example, this is the text that we're searching and we're looking for the letter Z. So in this cell I have a search function and it is search. B5 is what we're trying to find. B2 is where we're looking for it. And when I press enter it comes back with a value error because that string or that letter is not found anywhere in this text that we're searching. If I type a T it comes back and it's found that in the first position in this search text. And if I go back and type an X, it found an X at position 22, and there's our Z again. So it'll show an error if it can't find it. It'll show a number of the letter's position if it does find it. To handle those errors, you can use if error, and this works in Excel 2007 or later. So I can say if error, and then do the search, and then tell it what to do if there was an error. So in this case, if it can find the letter, I'll just have it show not found in this cell. For another example, I've got a list of street names here, and I'd like to search for a string within all those street names. So in this column I'm using is number. It's another way of checking the result of the search function. So do we get a number when we try searching for this string in one of these street names? So here it found C-E-N-T-R and also in the last item. We can also use a wildcard. So if I also want to return this one where there's an E between the T and the R, I can type the wildcard asterisk. So I used Shift 8 on my keyboard to get that. And when I press Enter now, it will return anything where there's C-E-N-T and then one or more characters or even no characters and then an R. So now it's found three where that is true. And for the next example, we'll look at, again, using is number to check the results of the search. And in this case, instead of true or false, I want to be able to add up all the ones that are true. So I've got a cell here that's trying to sum what is in column C. So instead of true or false, I type two minus signs in front of is number and that is called a double unary and that will change true to one and false to zero. So now I can see that there are three. I've got those highlighted with conditional formatting. So I was looking for people whose occupation is bank. This column shows the city and occupation together. That's the way we receive the data. So we've got a bank manager, but the next one down is someone who lives in a town called Bankhead, that person is a teacher. So we don't want to check the city names in our search. We only want to check occupation. So to do that, we can specify where the search should start. We know that after every city name, there's a pipe delimiter character. So I'm going to combine my original search and add another search inside it that will act as the start number. So it's still searching for this word in cell B2, but here we're going to use the start number argument and I've put in another search and asked it to find this pipe character in cell B2. So when I highlight it here and press the F9 key, it shows that there's a pipe character at position 9 here, so the search will start after that. So I'll press escape to get out of that. So 
It can't find bank in the occupation section here, but it does find it in bank manager. Now it's ignoring this bank head and finding bank teller.